Guten Tag, a -push. We have a new video today. It's the Bee's Knees by the Big Cheese himself, Mr. Lineker. Let's make history today as we jaw over Unit 7, Day 9. But first, let's do our daily punishment. What did the syrup say to the waffle? I love you a waffle lot. <laughs> Key terms for today. Detente. Stagflation. Vietnamization, the Nixon Doctrine, the Silent Majority, the Miley Massacre, OPEC oil embargo, Creep, Watergate, USV Nixon, the Saturday Night Massacre, the Shanghai Communique, Salt One, Silent Springs, the Philadelphia Plan, the War Powers Act, the Yom Kippur War, the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, the EPA, the VC, Kent State and Jackson State massacres, the Pentagon Papers, and the Paris Peace Accords. Our key concepts for today are Nixon's domestic and progressive achievements, his political strategies as president and the realignment of politics in America, his foreign policy and its effects, and his resignation. Watergate, baby. So let's get started. The big issue facing Richard Nixon was stagflation. Stagflation is something that should not happen, according to economists. It's high inflation and high unemployment. And this is going to be the big bane of America from the late 1960s and most of the 1970s. Some of the causes of stagflation are more female and teen workers in the workplace, with less skills and less chance for a wage advancement, baby boomers entering the workforce, making jobs harder to find, aging of America's factories and equipments, competition from revitalized economies in Europe and Japan, which will start to dominate steel, electronics, and automobiles, uh, areas that America's had previously dominated. There's going to be sharp increases of spending from the Vietnam War and Great Society, which causes inflation. Sharp rising in oil prices. Uh, we're going to talk about the OPEC oil embargo, where Middle Eastern countries start doing an oil embargo on America, which is going to cause a huge surge in oil prices. In the 12 years from the mid-70s to the mid-80s, the cost of living will triple in America, which is one of the sharpest periods of inflation in U.S. history. Wages will barely increase. So for stag inflation, usually for a recession, GDP goes down, unemployment goes down. Unemployment goes up, demand goes down, but uh, inflation goes down. With stagflation, you have all this bad stuff, but you also have inflation going up. Bad times. Let's talk about Richard Nixon's policy in Vietnam. Richard Nixon is going to try to uh, quiet the criticism. Uh, he wants to get out of Vietnam without giving up. He calls it peace with honor. He's going to announce the policy of Vietnamization. The policy of Vietnamization was a gradual withdrawal of U.S. troops and increasingly turning the fighting over to the South Vietnamese. He will do this, but it's not going to be successful. As soon as we pull our soldiers out of Vietnam, South Vietnam will collapse. He has a foreign policy doctrine also called the Nixon Doctrine. The Nixon Doctrine said that America would keep their treaties. We'll provide a nuclear shield for our allies. We'll provide military and economic aid to an attack country, but they also have to help out. Uh, it's, it goes along with the whole idea of Vietnamization, that they need to help out themselves. They need to defend themselves. Nixon's policy will not satisfy the peace movement, and they're going to continue to be even more anti-war protests. Nixon is going to be angered by the protests. He sees them as a product of a radical and loud fr fringe in America. Nixon is going to appeal to a group of America that he calls the silent majority, the silent majority are hardworking people that work every day. They vote. They're patriotic. They love the country, but they don't try to make waves. He basically said that most of America were the silent majority, but you have these radical fringes that are dominating American pol politics. He was suspicious of the liberal elite, and he tried to enlist the average Joe. Uh, he, he, Nick, Richard Nixon is one of the biggest examples of an early culture warrior. He's going to use his vice president, Spiro T. Agnew, as an attack dog against liberalism. Here's his policy of Vietnamization, not working very well. 
Let's talk about the life of the soldier in Vietnam. Conditions in the jungle were hard. It was hot, wet, dark, and rainy. The Viet Cong were fighting a guerrilla warfare of sneak attack and blend back into the country. It was hard to distinguish civilians from military combatants. There was a lot of drugs used by troops. Unpopular office, officers were often fragged, which means shot in the back by their own soldiers. What's going to happen with not knowing the enemy from the non-enemy is the Mai Lai Massacre. More than 500 people are going to be slaughtered in the village of Mai Lai, including young girls and women who are going to be raped and mutilated by U.S. soldiers. The army is going to try to cover up the carnage. It's going to take a year before it's finally reported. Uh, the brutality of the Mai Lai killing is going to lead to even more anti-war sentiment. Um, it was done by uh, Charlie Company, uh, the char soldier in charge of the Mai Lai Massacre. And they pretty much knew it was a village, uh, was William Cowley. He'll be given three years of house arrest after killing 300 people. A lot of people are turning against the Vietnam War because of the draft. The draft was unfair. People got unfairments, deferments. If you were in college, it was racist. Miley Massacre, kiddos. Yeah. There's going to be increased tensions because of Vietnam. In 1970, Nixon's going to authorize the U.S. troops to attack Cambodia. Uh, the, the Viet Cong were using the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which connected Cambodia to Vietnam to smuggle supplies into uh, South Vietnam to give to the Viet Cong. Uh, but what Richard Nixon did was he bombed a whole new country. He was saying he was doing this to try to end the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which will not be successful. But it's going to make people even more upset because it seems like he's expanding the war. There were two college shootings for anti-war protests, the Kent State Massacre and the Jackson State Massacre. The Kent State Massacre is the more famous one. It happened on May 4th. It's known as the May 4th Massacre. It was the killing of four and wounding of nine other unarmed uh, students in Kent State University by the Ohio National Guard. It took place during a peace uh, rally. Uh, there was a story that the uh, uh, Ohio uh, National Guard said they heard a shot and they fired on the protesters. Uh, this was the first time that Students have been killed in an anti-war gathering. Uh, 28 National Guard soldiers fired 67 rounds in a period of 13 seconds. Uh, one person was uh, paralyzed. It is really, really bad. There's going to be increased tensions between doves and hawks because of the Vietnam War. African Americans became cre increasingly angry over Whitey's War. The Senate is going to repeal the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution at this time as the Congress becomes more and more anti-war. The Pentagon Papers were released at this time. The Pentagon Papers uh, were leaked by Daniel Ellsberg, who uh, illegally leaps them. But what this did was these were governmental papers from 1945 to 1967. It showed all the lies about the Vietnam War. It showed that... Uh, America had been lying about the Vietnam War since the very beginning. LBJ had been lying. General Westmoreland had been lying. Uh, Daniel Ellsberg uh, is going to be loved by a lot of people on the left and hated by people on the right as a traitor. Uh, Richard Nixon will try to get the New York Times not to publish the, the Pentagon Papers. And the Supreme Court and the New York Times v. U.S. is going to say that the government cannot stop the printing of the press. So they will rule against Nixon. This is a very, very famous poem, uh, picture from the Kent State Massacre. Let's talk about Nixon's foreign policy. He wants Nixon wants to exploit the tensions between Russia and China, which have been falling apart at this time. He wants detente. Detente means improving relationships. It's a cold war, so detente is trying to warm relations. In the Shanghai communique, Nixon will actually go to China He's going to be the first president, the first non-Chinese person to go to China. He goes to the Forbidden City. He normalizes relationships with China. He recognizes China as an independent country, which we had not done since 1949. He accepts the one Chinese policy. And America will scale back support in the independent Taiwan, although we do still protect Taiwan. Um, a really big deal, him going to China. He's next going to go to the USSR. He'll sign a grain deal with uh Russia. He signs an anti-ballistic missile treaty with them. 
He also signs uh, the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, also known as SALT-1. This limited missiles to uh, 200 interceptors. A big part of detente is trying to reduce the amount of bombs and ballistic missiles and, inter -ballistic, and intercontinental ballistic missiles. And Nixon was really the first one to start it, although Kennedy and Johnson did a little bit of it before Vietnam. Nixon was progressive domestically, so let's talk about that. He had a, a liberal domestic policy by today's standards. He's going to expand the benefits of Social Security. Uh, he'll index Social Security for inflation. He'll establish the Environmental Protection Agency. He'll do the Clean Water and Clean Air Act, uh, which limited pollutants in the water and air. The person that really led to the green movement for the environmental movement was Rachel Carson. She wrote a book uh, called Silent Springs, which talked about the effect of pesticides and water and on the biosphere and ecosystem. And this is going to really lead to the green movement and like these kind of like environmental laws. Uh, Richard Nixon will do the Philadelphia Plan, which established affirmative action in federal contracting. Uh, it's the first like real governmental affirmative action program. Conservatives hate affirmative action. They say it's reverse discrimination. However, despite all of, uh, Nixon's liberal policies, he is going to appeal to the South. He, realize, he realizes that the South really don't want to be Democrats anymore, ever since Johnson because of the Civil Rights uh, Act and the Voting Rights Act. So in 1972, he's going to do the Southern strategy. He's going to oppose affirmative action. He's going to oppose mandatory school busing. He's going to call for more conservative judges to... Uh, like be tough on crime, and he's going to kind of go back a little bit on affirmative action. Uh, he's going to appeal to kind of a lot of those racial uh, tough on crime instincts in the South. And because of this, the Republicans are going to really start to dominate the South. Here's Nixon in 1972. In 1972, Nixon's going to have, win a landslide election. Uh, foreign policy in Vietnam dominated the election. The Democrats will nominate probably their most liberal candidate ever, George McGovern, who was a dove and wanted to pull out of Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam is going to be front and center. McGovern will run an unabashedly liberal campaign. He's going to try to appeal to minorities, feminists, leftists, and youth. And Nixon's going to portray him as a rad radical. His vice president, Eagleton, it'll turn out that Eagleton had uh, mental health issues. And it just makes uh, McGovern look even more crazy, although like we know today that there's no nothing to be ashamed of for mental health issues. It was more hush-hush back then. Right before the uh, election, uh, Henry Kissinger said that there was about to be an announcement about Vietnam. It was not true, but it made people think that Nixon was about to win Vietnam. And Nixon wins 49 states, the biggest landslide in American history. Despite all this stuff, Nixon is facing problems. Uh, Congress is very concerned about the U.S. bombing of Cambodia. Uh, military hid this from Congress. Uh, the, military, the bombing continued after the ceasefire. Uh, like I said before, Congress is going to withdraw the Gulf of Tonkin resolution. Uh, in 1973, Congress is going to pass the War Power Acts. The War Powers Act was meant to check presidential power. It said that Congress had to be notified within 48 hours of sending troops. It forbids the president of sending troops after 60 days uh, without uh, an act by Congress. They give, they're given 30 more days to remove them. Throughout this whole time since this, presidents have said the War Powers Act is unconstitutional. It goes against the presidential powers as commander-in-chief. But this was meant to limit the power of the president after the whole Vietnam War. This was passed over Nixon's veto. Uh, respect for the military is at an all-time low right now. The draft will be ended in 1973. It's going to move to an all-volunteer army. The Paris Peace Accords are going to be passed. The Paris Peace Accords was when Nixon pulled, uh, finally made peace with the North Vietnamese. He agreed to pull soldiers out of North Vietnam out of Vietnam. North Vietnam promised not to attack South Vietnam, but even he knew that wasn't going to happen. They would wait a little bit, and then they would attack and take over all of Vietnam. But this way, Nixon could say he did peace with honor. In 1973, Israel was attacked by Egypt in the Yom Kippur War. Is, uh, Egypt did really well in this war, and it looked like Egypt would take over 
Israel. America is going to start giving weapons to Israel to help them out. By this time, the Middle East is sick of America always helping out Israel. So the OPEC nations, which is like a uh, cartel of oil countries, they're going to do an oil embargo on America. So they're going to refuse to sell oil to America. This is going to increase the price of gasoline. This is going to lead to gas lines in America. Uh, people would have to go to get gas on certain days. Gas went up to like 6 $7 back then time. And people would have to wait in hours for gas lines. It's going to have a huge effect on the American economy, the OPEC oil embargo. There's a picture of no gas. Like I said before, Egypt and Syria, backed by the Soviets, are going to unleash a surprise attack on Israel, trying to get back territory they lost uh, in the Six-Day War of 1967. Nixon will put U.S. nuclear fo uh, forces on alert, and he's going to send in massive military supplies. Ultimately, Israel's going to agree to a ceasefire, although it was dri driving into Egypt. But this is going to lead to new uh, Arab resentment against America, which is going to lead to the uh, OPEC oil embargo. The Arab nations will do a uh, oil embargo. The oil embargo will be lifted in 1974, but OPEC is going to clamp down on protection, which is going to cause the price uh, of oil to quadruple. This is going to hurt the U.S. balance of trade and increase inflation. Gases will quadruple from $12 to $42 a barrel. Gases will start to be rationed. Gases went up as much as 43%. Some areas in America during this time will cancel Christmas lights because of electricity. Uh, the government will ask gas companies not to sell on Saturday uh, or Sundays uh, just to help rationing gasings. Here's a gas line. This is problematic, guys. This is not good. And lastly, we're going to talk about Watergate. Watergate was Nixon's downfall. Even though Nixon won 49 states, Nixon was very paranoid. Uh, he did not have a lot of self-confidence. He always thought his enemies were after him. Nixon had a whole black book of his enemies in America. Uh, Nixon is going to okay uh, having some of his aides breaking into the Democratic office during uh, the election of 1972 when he was running against McGovern. The Democrats were at Watergate Hotel, so he had some of his people break in there uh, to set up uh, electronic bugs so he could see what they were doing. The people that were doing this were called CREEP, the Committee to Re-Elect the President. Uh, the people that w broke into the Democratic office at Watergate will be caught and arrested. At first, Nixon said that he did not know what was going on. It was later found out uh, as uh, what's going to happen is there's these two journalists from the Washington Post, uh, Woodward and Bernstein. They're going to keep looking into this more and more. And they're going to start writing about this. And it's going to find out that the people that were arrested at Watergate had ties to Nixon. At the same time, the vice president, uh, Spiro Agnew, resigned for separate reasons. The new, uh, the new vice president uh, is Gerald Ford, who is in the House. John Dean uh, was a special counsel for Richard Nixon. He actually tried to cover up Watergate. He will be arrested and he's going to go to jail. Uh, one of the things that Nixon did was he would always tape his conversations. That was probably a mistake. He actually taped conversations of illegal stuff he was doing uh, about like breaking into Watergate. What happened was uh, people actually found out uh, that there was these tapes. There was a special uh, counsel created in Congress. They eventually wanted these tapes. They wanted a subpoena for these tapes. What happened was uh, Nixon wanted to get rid of the special counsel because they were getting too close to what was happening. So he wanted his uh, attorney general to uh, fi uh, to fire the special prosecutor, Archibald Cox. Archibald Cox was the special prosecutor looking up to see what was going on with Watergate. The uh, attorney general refused to do that, and he resigned. Then the deputy uh, attorney general refused to do that, and he resigned. And then uh, the U.S. Uh, solicitor general, Robert Bork, fired Cox. Um. What's going to happen is, uh, this is called the Saturday Night Massacre. It looks really bad for Nixon. His own people are resigning. He's firing the person that's investigating him. Uh, he goes to the Supreme Court because the special commission wants his tapes. He says that there's something called executive privilege, that these are national uh, tapes for a national emergency. 
they might have like uh, important information that other people shouldn't see that can endanger America. The Supreme Court does recognize the idea of executive privilege, but they says that they said that these tapes have nothing to do with like national the country being in danger. This is illegal stuff he might have done, and they're going to rule against him in U.S. v. Nixon. With his tapes being released, Nixon realizes that he's in trouble. He's kind of screwed, so he's going to re- resign on August eighth, nineteen seventy four, first and only president to resign in American history, and Gerald Ford will become president. Here's a picture. And that is all I have for you for today, kiddos. Until next time, deuces, 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 yeah.